when it looked like the Decepticons were about to embark on another scavenger hunt, Starscream was dismayed, but fortunately it turned out that Shockwave had microchipped all his creations, and the fossils they needed would be easy to find. Following the surprise return of the existing Predacon, Starscream was dismayed to find it put in his charge. He had immense trouble controlling the beast and resorted to using the Apex armor to protect himself from its attacks. Megatron sent Starscream and the Predacon to Scotland, where they found the Autobots had destroyed a team of Decepticons hunting for bones there. While the Predacon took on the Autobots, Starscream found Miko trying to reach Magnus's ship and accidentally lost the Apex armor to her. Battle ensued, but when the Predacon left for the Nemesis, Starscream and his two Seekers found themselves outnumbered by Autobots and retreated. In Megatron's bad books again, Starscream was further inconvenienced when the Predacon damaged the ship's communication dish. Though he tried to have it repaired by the Viacons, it didn't go so well, and Megatron eventually found out. Starscream found Knockout in the middle of experimenting with synthetic Energon on Silas, and had the medic add Dark Energon to the mix, believing it would allow Megatron to control the results. Instead, the new mix transformed Silas into an Energon-sucking zombie and created a plague which resulted in Knockout and Starscream being chased through the ship. Confronted by Megatron, they were forced to admit what they had done, and were sent to locate and destroy Silas. They eventually found he had already been dispatched, but to Starscream's dismay, the deed had been done by the recently freed Arachnid. Fortunately, he didn't have to deal with her as well, but he later had to face Megatron's wrath over his part in the affair. When Megatron took him to another abandoned mine, Starscream assumed his demise was near, but they were merely visiting Shockwave's off-site laboratory. The Predacon unexpectedly arrived and Starscream hit it with a metal pipe, only for it to transform and speak. The Decepticons quickly realized that despite Predaking's loyalty, it would not take him and his fellow Predacons long to realize their superiority to the Decepticons, so Starscream hatched a plan to kill two birds with one stone, luring the Autobots to the laboratory so its destruction could be blamed on them. The plan succeeded, and in the aftermath, the Decepticons discovered that the synthetic energon stored at the base had created cybermatter. Starscream managed to talk his way out of being disfigured by Shockwave over not warning the latter that the Autobots were attacking the lab. As Shockwave was put in charge of perfecting the synthetic energon formula, Megatron assigned Starscream to gather technology to repair the Omega Lock, which they would need for a delivery mechanism. After establishing the location of the Autobot base when they kidnapped Ratchet, Starscream was sent with his armada to destroy the hangar. He did so with aplomb, unaware that the Autobots had swapped the letters on the hangars and he destroyed the wrong one. The error came back to bite him when the Decepticons detected an probe carrying Laserbeak's transponder. Starscream went out and personally destroyed the probe before fleeing through a ground bridge to escape Optimus. Back on the Nemesis, when Predaking found out about the Decepticons' earlier treachery and went on a rampage, Starscream aided Megatron by blasting Predaking in the back. Though the Predacon was defeated, the ship next came under attack by Autobots. Starscream took his elite squad of flyers, which was now five or six bots, with him to defend the Omega Lock's control station. Their battle was driven into the Omega Lock control room where Starscream tried to grab the Star Saber only to end up battling RC. He watched with glee as Megatron killed Bumblebee and watched with horror as Bumblebee killed Megatron. He promised to avenge his master, but Shockwave pulled him away. When the Nemesis reached Cybertron, Starscream and Shockwave made their way to the escape pods, only to find there was one left. They ended up having to share it with Starscream complaining about how cramped it was.